Hello and welcome to the Build Up in Association with Lab Brooks. I'm your host once again, David Killick, and I'm joined by the legend that is and the fountain of knowledge when it comes to rugby, Lab Brooks ambassador and former Ireland international, Stephen Farris. Stevie, how's the form? Are you well? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks very much for that introduction. Um, <laughs> Finding an always, I'm not so sure. Uh, talking a lot of gibberish, but um, yeah, it's, I don't know where to start with in terms of rugby. Like, obviously, yeah. we were full of full of um, confidence and, you know, after the performance against South Africa, everything was great and rosy and then a few changes the weekend there against Fiji and uh, a little bit of negativity crept back in. I think even Andy Farrell and the rest of the coaching staff sort of addressed that like after the match um, and yeah, watching the game back, it was very stop start and it was very difficult. I was there as, as, as a fan sitting in the crowd in the corner and I spent more time chit chatting with the people around me, you know. Well, well, I, I, we'll, we'll get, we'll, look, we'll get stuck into it. Let's be open and honest. Rumor has it you got a little bit bored and you want to get out before the traffic. Is that true? Is that bad? Was it? I don't know who you you're getting your information from, Dave, but uh, yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't great. Like it's just here. Yeah, I've been involved in those games myself over the years where you just can't get it going. And I think Fiji striking early, brilliant try. Mm. It was. It wasn't difficult for them to score that try. They just got on the edge, lots of pace and gas. But honestly, 20 minutes into the match, the Fijians, hands on hips, blowing out their backsides. I was like, geez, this is going to be an absolute you know, hockey in session here for the Irish lads. But they just couldn't get the tempo into their game. Even you know, if you, if you watch their, their attack, they're overrunning their lines, um, sort of almost becoming blockers. I think a really good... Um, instance where that happened was when Joey Carberry actually took a high shot. Uh, I think it was Kieran Trebell overran the ball massively. And then he took, you know, Carberry sort of blindsided. And of course it was a red card, absolutely. But I think I had to sort of sum up Ireland's attack where you know Carberry had to take it into contact too many times. And you know, we're so used to seeing Sexton just sling it about and having more uh second or third receivers and yeah, it was just one of those games that, you know, Ireland couldn't get going and, uh, you know, their defence as well wasn't as aggressive as we've seen in previous weeks. And look, Andy Farrell was critical um, after the game as well. Like, is it fair to say that maybe after the hype of the South African game and obviously that win, was there a bit of a come down? Were the players maybe a bit fatigued mentally? Um, and what does that mean now going into the Australia game? Obviously, okay, look, Ireland beat Fiji 35-17. Australia then have come off a loss against Italy 28-27. You know, is it going to be another big build-up? The Aussies, as we know, good strength and depth. What way does it look, say, post South Africa, post the Fijian game, looking ahead to this weekend? Yeah, I think maybe the Fijian game is a bit up the arse that the boys maybe needed. Like, of course, the expectations there to, to beat Fiji and even the Irish boys in my personal opinion, playing 50 or 60%, still won, what, 37 points to 18 or whatever it was. So, like, they still, it was still a, a big enough victory when it comes to international rugby. Like, it's very difficult to put 30 or 40 points on a team um, at the best of times. Like, so, yes, lots, you can pick the bones of it. You can, you know, go in their, their defensive shape, which, you know, Andy Farrell was chatting about probably more was what he was disappointed that they didn't get up and shut down the Fijians and, show the intensity that they've shown them you know, against South Africa. And there's always going to be a drop-off. When you play the Rugby World Cup champions, they're playing against Fiji, who are still scrambling a team together to try and hit a bit of form to go towards the 2023 Rugby World Cup. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a come down after South Africa. It was the hottest ticket in time, the biggest show in time. And then, you know, Fiji, it sounded like they got the game sold out, you know, a day before kick off they definitely didn't like there was plenty of empty seat empty seats in the ground and it was sort of like you know we're doing a, a, everything in their power to sort of build this Fijian game up and then they built it up or you know everybody kind of built it up and then it just it absolutely fell flat in its face it was it was a really a uh, stop start game and um, a game that you know everybody around me couldn't get into at all and we all sort of walked away from it going geez I wonder what next week's gonna throw up um but I like that. I like that because, you know, Australia showed against France two weeks ago. They should have won it in the end, only for a, an unbelievable solo effort uh, to get beaten in the last couple of minutes. And, and they're going to come all guns blazing, David, when they come to Dublin uh, this weekend. And, you know, off that loss, their first ever loss to Deadly, um, they're going to be wound up. Mm. 
How, how do you see it going then? In fact, like obviously, from an Irish perspective, um, big talking point about a couple of injuries, Johnny Sexton, um, Jack Crowley coming in perhaps. Do you think he's up for the task? You know, what do you think uh, the Aussies are going to bring? Obviously, you mentioned that lost Italy as well. That they're going to be wounded. They're going to be coming here with something to prove. Um, and again, maybe a good scalp against the world number one team, which is Ireland. So, you know, injuries first. What do you think? Yeah, well, Carberry's out, and um, that's been announced. Um, Johnny Sexton's a doubt, but then you watch, you know, there are a few social media, and, and he's running around the, the high performance center, calling the plays, you know, putting lads through holes, practicing his practicing his kick in. So, like, if he's able to do that in a match week and, and jog around, and know, of course, match intensity is on a different level altogether. But I, I still think he's going to be fit and ready to go this weekend. Um. The only concern is if, if in, inside ten or fifteen minutes, and he has to chase back, and you know the next thing is Hammy or his quad, whatever. It's 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 Adam at the minute. You know goes again, and somebody like Jack Crowley's gonna have to step in and um you know put in a good performance. And I don't think necessarily that's a bad thing. Of course, we want our captain Johnny to, to be able to lead us to another victory, but you know a bit more game time for these young guys will, will certainly stand them well getting into the, the next season. Who else is that's going to get in ahead of the team that? Played against South Africa, probably, probably not. No one really. Maybe a couple of bench options. Well, Jack Conan started number eight. Um, Kieran Doris moved back to the blind side. Peter Romani, he's done nothing wrong really over the last couple of weeks. So there's a couple of decisions to be made. But you know, I think um, another thing that's come out in the media this week is you know the Rugby World Player of the Year, the Rugby um, Young Up and Coming Player of the Year, Dan Sheehan, Mark Hansen in for that. And you know, for the World Rugby Player of the Year, you have Johnny Sexton yet again, and George Van der Fleer. And you know, a big surprise that Artie Savelle's name wasn't there. But um, you know, I think George Van der Fleer is his name's written on it. And you know what? If Johnny won it, it wouldn't surprise me if Johnny actually handed it over to <laughs> Josh Van der Fleer because he's been not good. Um, yeah. No, nah, he probably wouldn't hand it over. Who am I joking? <laughs> he wouldn't. He but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big week. It's a big week, and, and even just on that, like you know, playing against Australia. And uh, Josh Van der Fleer has a man on match performance. Like that sort of cements your your name on that trophy, you know. So it, it, it's a big week. Uh, and Ireland will, of course, as you rightly say, they have a target on their back, but it just feels that they're in a good place. Um, they have a healthy enough squad. And you know, Australia, Australia come over to Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, and, and been on tours before, and they always pull out, you know, a couple of performances that shock everybody. Maybe that one against France was the one of their tour, but they're going to come firing and um, they'll certainly not roll over. Yeah, and, and just very quickly, like you mentioned the injuries and some of the kind of bench options. Like off the last two games, we know we're in a good place. Is this maybe an opportunity to try some of these maybe more inexperienced, younger people in those positions ahead of a World Cup? Like some people would argue maybe this is a good opportunity against a good side like Australia. Would you agree or would you just stick to the, the proven method? And yeah, it's maybe an opportunity to put them on the bench. Like uh, Craig Casey's probably going to get another run on, on the bench. Uh, Gibson Park will probably start yet again. Um, obviously, Conor Murray's out injured after making his hundredth appearance in the in the first game against South Africa. I, I, like I've said this for eighteen months, like I, Andy Farrell knows ninety five percent of his squad is going to be heading to the Rugby World Cup. The only other guy that I would like to see win another cap and see what he's like at this level is young Mikey Larry, the Ulster fullback. I think he's got something about him. He's got something different. He's a wee pocket rocket, explosive, you know, can change a game. You know, bring somebody like him off the bench for 20 minutes to go. And, and like he's a brave character as well. Um, body on the line every single week for Ulster. Obviously on his debut, you know, scored two tries for Ireland. Uh, could easily have you know, had a third, but, you know, get a short pass to James Lowe to run one in. So, like, he's an unselfish player as well. And I think he could be valuable for Andy Farrell to the Rugby World Cup. So, maybe a game like this is, you know, something that Andy gives him an opportunity to go out there. And we all know who's, you know, Hugo Keenan's number one, but who's number two? Is it Jimmy O'Brien? Is it, you know, is it going to be somebody else? So, uh, if he's fit and ready to go, then I'd love to see, you know, Mikey Larry get an opportunity this weekend. There you go. Well put. Um, right, before we wrap up, i got to ask you about, Razi, uh, like, <laughs> the tweets, you know, like, has he lost the plot or, or where is he going? 
Hoe voel jy vandag? Kom kak in die bos. So, for anybody who knows their Afrikaans, that's hello, how are you? Go shit on the bush. So, yeah, I think that's, Razzie's putting a lot of stuff up like that, isn't he? Saying, unfollow me, you know, don't watch it if you don't like it. Yeah, like, I've met Razzie a couple of times, seems like a great guy, seems like a brilliant coach. A couple of lads that I'm very close with who played under him at Munster said he was unbelievable. I bumped into, um, uh, what do you call him, uh, assistant coach. Uh, as, his name will come to me in, in Dublin. Yeah. Um, um, played play for Munster, play yeah. Munster, the fullback. Ah. Felix, Felix. Felix Jones, yes. Flipping hell. It's a name you don't really forget like either, is it? And I bumped into Felix Jones in Dublin at a cafe. This is geez, a year and a bit ago. Uh, I was just then knocking around and um, he came up with a, I think his wife and kids and he's walking out the door and he seen me. He's ah, geez, Stevie, how's it going? And I played obviously with Felix and I was like, what's the crack? And he says, oh, geez, I have to go home here. You know, Razzie's just on my case constantly. Like the guy just never shuts off and like he's just 24-7, just, you know, new new ways of looking at things. And um, I, I just think that he's, you know, people see him as a breath of fresh air coming into the game. Personally, I don't agree with the way he goes about putting the information on social media. We all know there's, you know, there's a reason why he does it. Um, my opinion of why he does it is so that the, these small things that he's pointing out don't happen to him in a rugby world cup and they you know don't cost his team uh the match in the end and like there's no there's no doubt that everything that he's putting up is right um yes a few of the decisions might be argued either way but you know he's a smart guy he's, he's an intelligent guy i don't think he cares <laughs> i don't think he gives yeah. two hoots what people think of him or um you know the south african team as a whole and you know he's just trying to get the best out of his players and trying to give them the best opportunity possible to go and win another rugby world cup and you know no doubt this weekend we'll see another few tweets it'll be really interesting to see if they get a big victory will there be as many tweets um yeah but we'll, we'll wait and see. that's it maybe it's uh, his deflection away from the team bring it on to him as, a, uh, as opposed yeah. to the players but uh, uh you won't unfollow him then will you no i i sort of you know, you're sitting, you know, after the game, sort of scrolling through your feed, just just waiting for the Razzie, you know, Erasmus tweet to pop up. Um, and yes, it is good viewing, but yeah, I just think it's maybe a little disrespectful towards towards the referees um, and towards the game. And, you know, it almost feels like it's okay for Razzie to do it. But if every other coach started doing it, then I think it's, you know, that's... Uh, yeah, you know, you'll find yourself in a cul-de-sac of uh, of, of you know, negative media that will come out the back of that. So, um, yeah, maybe it needs to be nipped in the bud at some stage, but I don't think that's going to happen any anytime yet. David. No, it's not. Okay, before I let you go, um, this weekend, uh, Australia, APM, what way is it going to go? Give us a score. Yeah, late kickoff. I know a lot of people said, "What's it like, Stevie, playing at you know eight o'clock at night?" And you know, even see the Rugby World Cup or some ten p.m. fixtures and. You know, it's really difficult. It's a long, long day. It's a third game as well. Um, you're sort of, you know, you've, you've more than your bags packed in the hotel to leave after the game, like the next morning. Do you know what I mean? Like you're yeah. sort of, you're sort of on your way out of camp uh, as the games, as you're on your way to the game. If, if that sort of makes sense, yeah. it, it doesn't. I know, but it's um, it, it it's going to be tough. Long old day. A couple of walks around it. You know, Dublin over to St Stephen's Green. The lads stay in the Shelburne practice their line outs, sit in front of a laptop for half an hour, a couple of team meetings, do a few spotter line outs, you know, four or five different meetings to get in there to get your, your energy levels up and make sure that you perform at the right level. So, you know, 8, 8 p.m. kickoffs. Um, some people might be walking the park. Some people might find it very difficult to, to get adjusted to it. Me personally, I, I like that, you know, an early kickoff when possible. Um, so, yeah, uh, I certainly think, you know, this is an Irish experience I uh, and they're going to win this match, you know, 10 to 15 points and you, know, you really take it to this Australian side. Australia will give you opportunities, but they are very dangerous with ball in hand. So, you know, if the Irish defence can, can up it again like they showed against South Africa, then I have no doubt they'll get the result. Excellent. And uh, yeah, you heard it here first. So if you're knocking around St. Stephen's Green on Saturday afternoon, you might see a group of lads practicing line-outs and all this in, in, by, in by the pond in the green. But uh, Stevie... 
Uh, thanks again for your time. And remember, if you are betting on anything this weekend, please gamble responsibly. Visit gamblecare.me.